Now watch this. I'm about to hit you with something. The Bible says that if you break one of these laws, you are guilty of breaking them all. That's in James 2.10. So if I lie, I'm guilty of fornication, adultery, homosexuality, all of that. Because it says, whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Breaking the whole law. Think about that for a minute. Digest it because people in Christianity... We often try to compare our righteousness to, uh, to other people's righteousness. And when you do that, it's easy to look at the areas that they're weak in and boast about your strengths. You know, well, I'm a strong prayer warrior. You're weak at praying. But then you struggle at loving people and they're good at loving people. You know, uh, I do this right. I do this right. And so when we compare ourselves to the righteousness of other people, it's easy to feel holier than thou. It's easy to look down at other people. That's why you see so many people judging and critiquing and, you know, coming up, you know, about divorce and remarriage and about, um, so many other topics where they look at an individual and, and they just judge them, right? Not knowing what that person went through, not knowing the whole story. And so the Bible literally says that the law was given to show us pretty much that we need a savior, all right? Because in Galatians 3.11, it says that no man is justified by the law on the side of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Nobody can stand before the Lord and say, I've kept all the laws. I've done everything everything right, I'm justified. And so if you put that with James 2.10, where it says that if you break one law, you're guilty of breaking them all. Now it's going to, it has to change your perspective in the way that you judge people. It has to change your perspective in the way that you look at other people's weaknesses. Yes, maybe you're strong in an area that they're weak in, right? But in God's eyes, you cannot argue with this verse. It clearly says if you're guilty of one, you've broken them all. So I need the grace of God, just like the person that I'm looking at needs the grace of God. I know people who, you know, we all talk about um, homosexuality, right? It's a sin. But pride also is a sin. The Bible says God resisted the proud, right? The Bible says what is the greatest commandment, right? So when people break that commandment, they might say, well, it's not as bad because I'm not fornicating, I'm not committing adultery, but you take it back to the word of God and it says, if you've broken one law, you are guilty of them all. Jesus didn't die on one cross, like a huge cross for the big sins and then a tiny cross for the small sins. And that's where people get it twisted and it will humble you and it will make it easier for you to love people because a lot of people in Christianity, they think they are where they are because of their own righteousness. They think they are where they are because of their own decisions, even though they talk about the grace of God and the love of God. I've seen it time and time again in church. They look down at other people because they feel that they've made, you know, certain decisions, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, that's why, you know, they're blessed. That's why they're in the position. But the reality is, you know, other people have been in different circumstances and situations that might have led them down that path that they didn't have control over. And I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm saying, and from the perspective of judging other people, you got to be careful. And the example I always like to use is when somebody looks at a young lady and she's got a couple of baby daddies, she's got a couple of kids, right? And then you're married. It's your first marriage. You just happen to marry the first person and you're looking down at her and saying, you know, I would, I would never do that. Oh my goodness. I would never have multiple baby daddies and kids everywhere. But the thing you don't see is at three and four years old, she was getting molested. Right. And so that opened up some kind of door of promiscuity and just all kinds of stuff and all kinds of spirits. And so as a child, they had to struggle with that and they had to battle that. But you grew up in a good home. You grew up protected. You grew up with a fence around you where you were, you were, you know, protected from that. And so your decisions that you made in life, it's not just because you're so righteous, it's the path that God took you down. And so this is why God is the only righteous judge, because I might have came in on the story on the book of Psalms, but I wasn't there from Genesis to Psalms, right? So I only see this little chapter of your life and I want to judge you, you know, that you're on drugs. I want to judge you that you're fornicating. I want to judge you that you're committing adultery, but I didn't see the chapters where your father hurt you. I didn't see the chapters where you walked up. God sees all of it. And that's why he's the only righteous judge. So my thing to you is to humble yourself, right? We all got to humble ourselves and we've got to love on people with the love of Christ and show compassion, even though people are difficult, even though you know, people will get on your nerves. Even though people got all kinds of issues, you have issues too. You're not, you, it's funny how people have a higher tolerance 
for their issues and they've got excuses for this, the way they fall short in their sins and they got all the grace in the world. Well, you know, God understands why I'm doing this and doing that and doing that. Or oftentimes we just simply won't address it because in church we've trained ourselves to think there's like these big sins and then there's these sins that, you know, uh, you know, God's not really tripping about me being prideful. God's not really tripping about me not loving that individual. God's not really tripping about the way that I have bitterness toward my father. At least I'm not out here fornicating. At least I'm not out here, uh, you know, being a homosexual or something like that. And it's just not true because he says if you've broken one of these laws, you're guilty of breaking them all. So in God's eyes, it's no different. But in the church, we try to make it different. And this is something that is hard to, to preach and teach because people simply don't want to receive it because they want to believe they are better than other people. They want to believe that they have a higher status, you know what I'm saying, than other people. But the reality is anything that you've attained is only through the grace of God. You know, and that's just something to think about. And, and the main reason behind bringing this up today is when you're interacting with people, you're interacting with sinners, you're interacting with the lost, you want to do it from the place of grace, love, and compassion. And remember, the Bible says, you know, as such were some of you, you know, let me pull that up real quick. I want to read it uh, word for word in the King James Version. I love the King James Version, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And let's see, let's go back one verse. This is just a powerful, you know, reminder. Uh, let's see. Give me one second. We're going to end the video with this. Know ye that that the, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of a God, you're not justified because, oh man, I just follow all the rules. You, I guess what I'm trying to get you to understand is you can't follow all the rules. No matter how much you try, you're breaking some rule. You need the grace of God. You are not perfect. You, that's why it's so crazy. You have to be careful when you judge people because people will judge brother Marcus or somebody else for a weakness or for a flaw, but they have those same same flaws or different flaws or different issues that they need the grace of God too. So you can't forget that. Always remember that. It's a it's a hard thing because people don't want to receive it, you know. But um, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. What has you under its power? Bitterness, unforgiveness. You know, have you had see that that's something, you know, because you feel justified and why you haven't forgiven somebody. You feel justified and why you're bitter, but it's still sin. It's still something that God wants to deal with in your heart. And the grace of God is covering you if you haven't forgiven. The grace of God is covering you if you're still bitter. But it's still sin, it's still wrong. Something to think about. Love you guys, be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus' name.